a $3.5 billion city held hostage for 25 years by an animal. This is the King Forest Town Centre, a $3.5 billion mega-project in New South Wales, Australia. The numbers are staggering. 869 hectares of land, over 4,500 new homes, and a city for 11,000 people. But the real story isn't the size, it's the engineering war being fought to build it. This entire project is locked in a 25-year battle against its biggest challenge, protecting the local koala population. The most critical pieces of engineering here aren't the roads or buildings. They are the two-meter-high acoustic fences, the seven specially designed tunnels, and the 76,000 new trees that must be planted before the city can be built. But when you engineer a fortress for nature, how do you stop it from becoming a prison for its 11,000 new human residents? To understand this engineering war, you first have to understand the 25-year battle that led to it. This project is one of the oldest and most controversial in the region. It dates back to the 1990s and early 2000s, when a company called Leader Holdings, run by billionaire Bob L, bought this huge 869-hectare patch of farmland. He bought it for a tiny fraction of its current worth, perhaps as little as $14 million to $20 million. He saw a future city of 4,500 homes, but for decades it remained a ghost town. The project was declared a state significant development, which means the state government, not the local council, had the final say. This kicked off a decades-long legal war. Environmental groups, community members, and the local Tweed Shire Council fought the developers at every turn, worried about the impact on the sensitive environment and, most importantly, the koalas. The original developer, Leader was even prosecuted in 2011 for illegal land clearing right next to the site in the Cudgeon Nature Reserve. Finally, in 2013, the first major concept plan was approved, but with a list of incredibly strict engineering conditions. Actual construction, run by main contractor Shadforth, only began in May 2022. That 25-year delay wasn't just red tape, it was a war over how to build this city, a war that was finally settled, not in a courtroom, but in an engineering manual. Before you can build a single house, you have to build the ground it sits on. And at King's Forest, that ground is the first great engineering challenge. The first job is bulk earthworks. This is one of the largest earth-moving operations on the coast. The plan is to cut and fill. They dig up earth from seven different precincts on the site and use it to fill and level the western areas. But the engineers found a problem. The site isn't balanced. They don't have enough dirt. Based on the plans, they must import 320,000 cubic meters of clean fill just to get the site level. So what does 320,000 cubic meters look like? A standard Olympic swimming pool holds about 2,500 cubic meters of water. This means Shadforth must source, buy, and haul 128 Olympic swimming pools full of soil onto the site. This massive operation, involving thousands of truckloads, is essential to create the stable, engineered platform for the entire 4,500 home city. But there's a second, more dangerous problem with the ground. What about the soil that's already there? Remember, this 882 hectare site was used for agriculture for decades. Soil tests found exceedances for a dangerous chemical, arsenic. This poison is a dark chemical legacy from two main sources, old world pesticides used on a former banana plantation on the site and chemicals from old school cattle tick dip sites. You cannot build family homes on top of arsenic. So before a single slab can be poured, engineers must execute a remediation action plan. This is a careful, almost surgical operation. First, they map the arsenic hotspots. Then, they move in with excavators to dig up all this contaminated soil. It's carefully loaded onto sealed trucks and hauled away to a special licensed landfill. Only after an independent environmental auditor signs off that the land is officially clean and safe for residential use can the builders move in. This is the invisible, multi-million dollar engineering that must happen before the first house is even sold. Once the ground is safe, you have to plug the new city into the grid. But building the utilities for 11,000 new people next to a protected nature reserve 
is its own technical nightmare. A city of this size needs a massive new water supply. A trunk water main is being built to connect King's Forest to the nearby community of Casuarina. It also needs a major regional sewer pump station to handle all the wastewater. But the biggest water challenge isn't getting fresh water in, it's getting the rainwater out. The King's Forest site sits right next to the environmentally critical Cudgeon Lake and Cudgeon Nature Reserve. If the dirty stormwater from 4,500 new roofs, driveways and roads, a mix of oil, chemicals and garden fertilizers flows into that reserve, it would be an ecological catastrophe. This is why the entire project is built around Water Sensitive Urban Design, or WSUD. Think of this as a giant, passive filtration system built into the city itself. The master plan includes water management areas and lakes. These aren't just for decoration. They are engineered bioswales and retention ponds. They are designed to catch all the city's stormwater, slow it down and let the sediment and pollution settle to the bottom. Plants in these ponds are designed to absorb the nutrients before the clean water is slowly and safely released into the nature reserve. And then you have the roads. To move 11,000 people, the old roads just won't work. The project's new spine is the King's Forest Parkway, a new four-lane arterial road. This road will connect to a brand new, signal-controlled intersection on the main Tweed Coast Road. This network is so critical that the New South Wales government has tipped in $18.5 million to help fund the $79 million road network, which includes duplicating the entire Tweed Coast Road to four lanes. This is vital not just for the new residents, but to provide high-speed access to the new, nearby Tweed Valley Hospital. But these new, wide, fast roads create the single biggest problem of the entire $3.5 billion project. How do you build a four-lane highway through the middle of an endangered animal's home and not destroy it? This is where the 25-year war was fought. The solution is a masterclass in environmental engineering. The project's greatest challenge and its greatest engineer is the koala. The decades of legal delays all came down to one powerful document, the Koala Plan of Management, or KPOM. This plan is a set of ironclad engineering rules forced on the developer to ensure the koalas are protected from the three biggest threats a new city brings. Habitat loss, dogs and cars. First, the cars. To stop koalas from ever walking onto that new four-lane parkway, Engineers are building a $1.3 million koala exclusion fence. This is not your average fence. It is a two meter high solid timber wall. That height is specific. It's too high for a koala to climb. It is also a certified acoustic barrier, engineered to block road and city noise from disturbing the wildlife. But its most important job is to be a funnel. The fence lines the new roads and wraps around the residential areas creating a hard border between koalas and people. It is designed to channel all koala movement away from the houses and towards a few specific safe crossing points. These crossings are the second part of the solution, seven koala culvert crossings. These are concrete tunnels built under the highway, but the engineers can't just build a tunnel, they have to build a tunnel that a koala will actually use. Koalas are fussy. They will not walk through a dark, wet, scary pipe. So these are log culvert crossings. They are specially designed with furniture inside. That means logs, rocks and ropes are installed to create a dry, natural feeling path. The entire legal approval of this $3.5 billion project rests on the hope that a koala will trust this engineered tunnel instead of trying to find a way onto the road. Finally, there's the problem of habitat. The developer has to replace what they are destroying. They are legally required to plant 76,411 new koala food trees. This is an enormous logistical challenge. You can't just plant a tiny sapling and call it a tree. These trees need years to grow before they are big enough to feed a koala. This means the planting, the ecological engineering, must be done years before the clearing and the civil engineering can even begin. 
the developer must also set aside over 300 hectares of land, more than a third of the entire site, as a permanent conservation area. This huge environmental and financial cost, locked in after 25 years of fighting, leads us to the project's new owners, and a massive plot twist. The very name of this project is King Forest Town Centre, Precincts 3 and 4. So, where is it? This is the central mystery of the project today. The town centre is supposed to be the beating heart of the new city, a mixed-use hub with shops, community spaces and housing. The original developer, Leader, submitted a massive state-significant development application for it, known as SSD 59151965. This plan, designed by Raunick Design Group, was huge. It detailed 930 new dwellings, a new school, and a mix of build-to-rent and seniors' housing. It even had a 20% affordable housing target. But here's the twist. If you look up that application today, its official status is withdrawn. The plans are dead. The 930 homes, the school, the affordable housing, all of it has been erased. Here is what happened. In August 2025, a new developer, Stockland, one of Australia's largest community builders, bought the entire Kings Forest project from LIDA in a massive $620 million deal. This was a total takeover. And one of Stockland's first acts appears to have been pulling the plug on LIDA's town centre plan. This is a clear signal that they have a completely different vision for the heart of the city. As of right now, Stockland's official word is that the town centre is subject to future approvals and funding. The project is back in the design and documentation stage, which means Stockland is starting from a blank page on precincts 3 and 4. And withdrawing the town centre wasn't the only massive change Stockland made the moment they took over. The original 2010 concept plan had another massive feature, a 69-hectare, 18-hole golf course. Stockland has now officially removed it from the master plan. This is a huge pivot. A 69-hectare golf course is a 1990s idea that uses huge amounts of water and pesticides, a big problem right next to a nature reserve. By removing it, Stockland not only saves on environmental cost, but also frees up 69 hectares of approved land. The speculation is that this land will be used for something far more in demand and profitable today. New aged care facilities or land lease communities. Stockland has inherited a 25-year battle and 25 years of community distrust. Their biggest challenge now is to prove that their new vision for the town centre and the old golf course land will finally deliver the community facilities, like libraries and parks, that the local council has been worried about funding for years. So, King's Forest is a $3.5 billion mega-project, but it's really two projects in one. A massive civil engineering build and an even more complex ecological engineering fortress. The first new homeowners are expected to start building in late 2025. But the town centre at its heart is, for now, still just an idea on a piece of paper. The ultimate challenge remains, can you build a 4,500 home city in a koala's backyard and save both? Let us know in the comments what you think of this incredible engineering challenge. And for more videos on the world's greatest mega builds, be sure to like, subscribe to the Ultimate Mega Builds channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.